Good morning and welcome to another live stream worship service at St. Mark United Methodist Church in Cleburne, Texas. My name is Andy Tyler. I'm pastor here and um, I'm joined today by Katie Stallings, our director of music ministries, Diane Stewart, our accompanist, and Becky King, our children's coordinator. And then in the balcony, we have Drew Stallings, who is running the video and sound. So we are appreciative of everyone. Oh my goodness, my computer is on because I was setting it up and now it's like running 30 seconds below behind me. So if you hear an echo, that's me, but maybe it's just us that hear it. I don't know. So anyway, technical difficulties. I was afraid to close my computer. Hold on just a second. I'm going to close it. The wonders of technology and people who don't know what they're doing. But we, uh, we are live on YouTube today, which is a, it's a, it's a miracle because I put it together. So anyway, and I don't, still don't know how I did it, but it's done. Anyway, announcements. Um, this week we have a couple of meetings. I, I think we have our finance committee meeting. Yes, yeah, 6 o'clock, our finance committee meeting will, on Tuesday. And we're also going to have a, um, a church council meeting at 7 o'clock on Tuesday following the, the finance committee meeting. And we are going to be talking about when we can re, um, have people come in for in-person worship. I'm thinking possibly in a couple of weeks we'll probably be um, letting people come back to worship because so many people in our congregation have had both of their shots now. We'll still be... Um, still be social dis social distancing and wearing masks for the foreseeable future but um, but we are thinking it's going to we're going to be able to to restart in-person worship and it will be exciting to have more people here on Sunday mornings I know many of you are looking forward to that I know that I am looking forward to that and um, it's going to be great when we can do that so um, other things going on, we have our agape groups to tomorrow at 2 o'clock and then a women's group on Friday at 9.30 a.m. Both of those are via Zoom. Um, if you would like to join, just um, let us know in the church office and we will send you the link so you can join. Um, we also have our WOW Children's Ministry at 6 o'clock on Wednesday via Zoom. Um, bread basket is one to three. If you know anybody who is hungry, send them our way. Or if you are hungry and need food, come on Tuesday between one and three, and we have food that we can share with you. Um, birthdays this week. To, tomorrow is Timothy Emery's birthday. He is, I'm sure he's just about 22 or something. He's so young. <laughs> No, he's probably a little bit older than that, but he, but still, happy birthday, Timothy, and I'm going to let Katie sing for you. <laughs> happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Timothy, happy birthday to you. As you know, though, it has been one heck of a week all over Texas. Um, school was closed, I guess, all week. Uh, the church office was closed all week. We had two pipes freeze here on our campus, one in uh, one bathroom and one across the street in the parish house. But we had no bursting pipes. Everything is okay. But, um, but it was cold, and I know that many of you have suffered through loss of power. Um, I think most people in the community of Cleburne anyway have had water. We haven't had any water issues here except unless you've lost water because of frozen pipes. We hope that none of you had burst pipes in your home. Um, but we are thankful that the weather is turning warmer. Of course we had to miss our Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday 
Um, we were just going to do drive-by ashes, and we had to cancel that because the parking lot was just covered in ice. And, um, but we have started the new season of Lent, and today I'll be preaching from the Gospel of Luke, um, talking about when Jesus turned his, set his face toward Jerusalem, which is only described in the Gospel of Luke. But as we begin our Lenten journey, let us also maybe not set our faces toward Jerusalem, but set our faces toward Jesus. Because Jesus is going where we should be going and where we, we should want to be going, even though Jesus might be calling us to do things we don't really want to do. But let us think about where we are headed in our life and where Jesus may want us to be headed as we begin our Lenten journey. Please join in this morning's call to worship. Our Lord is on a journey, and the way leads through opposition and misunderstanding. Jesus invites us to follow him. This journey leads through the shadows of betrayal, the night of Gethsemane, the afternoon dark darkness of Golgotha. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Our Lord is on a journey. May we have the grace to follow this Christ and to give to him our very lives. For in giving away our lives we find them, and in dying we live. Now please join in this morning's opening prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus great, great teacher, teacher. You, you place, place tremendous, tremendous responsibility, responsibility upon those who follow you. You, you demand, demand more than, than we are often willing to give. give. You, you promise, promise no safety, only that the way will be rough. Make, make us ready and willing to walk your rocky path, path and, and carry your subversive word to hostile ears for the hope and promise of rewarding life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know Christian. 
and they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know Now please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Becky King, Children's Coordinator. Hope everyone's okay today and, and warm. So, you know, I had to stay in all week like everybody else because of the weather being so bad. And I was determined that I wanted to have one project. At least I feel like I could ac had accomplished something during that week. And um, so I decided to do some cleaning out. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have this one drawer that just has stuff in it. No matter how organized my house is, there's still things that I just can't figure out where I want to put it, but I don't want to throw it away, so we stuff it in this drawer. And there's just lots of stuff in there that I know I should throw away, but, but I haven't. So when I was looking in that drawer to try to organize it, I, I found a calculator. It was a Texas Instrument calculator. We used to use these all the time. We had them, you know, in every room of the house. And, and now, we, we don't. We have it on our computer. I use the one on my cell phone. Kids, you probably have it on your Chromebooks. So I was just kind of playing with this one. I, I couldn't believe the battery still worked, because no telling how many years it's been in there. So I just decided I'm just going to do a lot of little addition um, problems here. So I started putting the numbers in, and I did quite a few of them. And then I looked down, and I realized I had made a mistake. The mistake was, you can probably guess, I forgot to push the plus button in between each number. And you have to do that for it to work, or you just have this long number. So, you know, I got to thinking about mistakes. You know, in life, we, we make mistakes. Sometimes we're 
unkind to someone or maybe we say something that's not the complete truth or or maybe we snap at our husband when we're in the house all week or you know just just things like that everybody makes mistakes because we're not perfect and you know this um calculator has a button to take care of mistakes it says c e on it it stands for cancel entry so when you push that button it's all it's all done it's all over and you know god is like like that when we he wants us to come to him and and uh, ask forgiveness when we've made mistakes and it's kind of like he hits that uh, cancel entry button and and it's over he doesn't hold it over our heads he doesn't have files that have all our mistakes in it that he keeps he just says to come to me and ask forgiveness and so you know that's what we should do but sometimes we kind of dwell on things and sometimes we kind of hold those mistakes in and and we worry about it and worry about it but the first thing we should do is go to God and ask for forgiveness because that's what he wants us to do Uh, he says in the Bible when we confess our sins God is faithful and just and forgives our sins and not only that but he cleanses us from all our wrongs. I'm so thankful for that. And I know whenever I do go to him and ask for forgiveness, you, you just feel a sense of relief because you know he's, he's got it taken care of. You know, it's kind of like the, the uh, parable of the prodigal son where uh, the man had two sons and the younger one decided that he was gonna take off on his own. On his own. He wanted his inheritance, which was his money, and, and he left. And of course, he made lots of mistakes and he lost all his money and he didn't even have food to eat and he did everything wrong because he wasn't ready for that so he wanted to go home but he was so worried about what his father would say or if he would have to beg to come home but as soon as the father heard he was coming home he rejoiced he even had a celebration and you know that's that's how it is when when we have messed up and and we go to god he rejoices and he welcomes us back the other thing is we need to always be sure to forgive others in that same way that God forgives us. We need to do it quickly and, and just let it go, and that's, that's the end of it because he wants us to be the example like he is. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your mercy and your forgiveness. Help us to trust you. Help us to confess our sins and remember to forgive others. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into a time of uh, personal prayer, I just want to um, lift up a friend of mine, Deborah Fries, who is, um, she's been cleaning my house ever since I moved here. And um, she actually, uh, um, she cleaned the, uh, the Beans house before they um, went to assisted li- living and um, did a lot of care for them. But she has been diagnosed with cancer. And so I'd like to lift her up. and. Um, And we are thankful that Sue Childress went home last week. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the warmer weather this, this today and yesterday, that the snow is almost completely gone, though it is, its effect is still lingering in much of the state where so many people are suffering from lack of drinking water. So many people's homes have been damaged by bursting pipes. So many people's lives have been changed just from these cold temperatures of a few days in one week of the year. We pray for all of those who are suffering right now. 
because of what the weather has done to their lives. We pray for those who have lost family members because of the weather. We pray for those who who are unsure how they're going to pay the bills to repair the damage done. This has been such a difficult year since last spring when the pandemic was first started showing its effect in this nation. We just pray, oh God, for all of those who are suffering for all the different reasons. We pray for your peace. We pray for your courage. We pray for your transformation. And we pray that you will help us as your followers, even those of us who are suffering ourselves because of our losses We pray that you will help us as your people to reach out to those in need. To remember how much you gave for us. And how much you have given us to give to others. Give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us courage. But most of all, give us love. Empower us to love as you love so that this world will be transformed by your work through us. We pray for the leaders of this country who are trying to figure out how to manage all of these different crises that we are facing. We pray because there is so much division in our country, in our politics, in our, in our faiths, in our culture, We are very good at demonizing those with whom we disagree, but we are not very good at loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us, O God, to have the courage to love, to have the courage to put aside our differences and see the value in every human being. Let us love as you love us. As we begin this Lenten journey, let us focus less on what we should give up, more on what we should give to others in love. Let this not be just a time of self-sacrifice, but a time of self-discovery, a time of discovery of you and who you are and how you love. Give us vision, O God, for the way this world could be and give us the strength and the power to fulfill that vision. Let your kingdom come. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, O God, all of these in the name of your Son who taught us to pray those words and taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd now like to um, invite you to, to give to the ministries of St. Mark. If you, you can do that by writing a check and sending it in the mail to St. Mark United Methodist Church at 1109 West Henderson Street, Cleburne, Texas, 76033. Or you can drop it off at the Parish House, which is located directly behind the church at 1111 West Chambers Street. Um, That's where our office is located. There is a mail slot right next to the door, or if you choose, you can ring the doorbell, and um, if we're here, we'll come and open the door and take it from you. And 
or you can give electronically. You can give through the Givelify app. You can download the app on your phone or your tablet. Or you can go to our website, stmarkcleburn.com, click on Give, and then the, the blue Givelify button, and that will take you to a page. Giving electronically is very easy to do. If you download the app, you just find the St. Mark Methodist Church in Cleburne, and it just takes a few clicks, and your gift is given. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your generosity to the kingdom of God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gifts that you have given us and the gifts that have been given to you. And we pray for your guidance as we seek to spread the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord, not just here in Cleburne, but everywhere. Help us, guide us, strengthen us, empower us. Use these gifts, O oh God, to change your world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then he went on to another village. Another village. As they were going along the road, Someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the, the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The time with Jesus had been extraordinary. It had been a time of inspiration, watching Jesus heal people, watching people transform lives, watching people set people free from demons, seeing him calm the storm, being empowered to do some of those things themselves. The disciples had been blessed beyond measure. Their lives had been transformed. They had given up everything for Jesus, and everything had been worth it. They got so much in return. They were inspired. They were awed. They were challenged. His teaching touched their hearts, even as it convicted them. They wanted to follow Jesus and were willing to go wherever he would go. They knew it was dangerous. John the Baptist had been killed by Herod. So when Je Jesus started talking about his own death, that he would be betrayed, that he would, be, that he would suffer, that he would die and then rise again, though they, the disciples probably didn't know about that rising again, what that truly meant, 
they began to get worried. And when Jesus said, it's time to go towards Jerusalem, they really must have been worried. They knew what the scribes and Pharisees had been saying about Jesus. They, were, they did not live in a vacuum. They knew that John the Baptist's faith had gotten him killed. His teachings had gotten him killed. Why would Jesus be above that? Well, Jesus was different. He, he could heal. He could do miraculous things that John couldn't do. He could empower people to do things. But still, going to Jerusalem seemed risky. And yet they would follow wherever he would go. And so Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem and on they went. I have a feeling that the disciples would have preferred to go around Samaria as many people did. Maybe most people did because the Samaritans, well, they were the outcasts. They were enemies. They didn't like each other. They weren't welcome there. The Jews weren't welcome in the Samaria and the Samaritans weren't, weren't welcome in Judea or Galilee. They didn't like each other. They wanted to stay away from each other. But the shortest way from Galilee to Judea to Jerusalem was to go straight through Samaria. The disciples, knowing what could possibly happen, knowing that Jesus was talking about his death, probably made them think, let's, let's go the long way. But Jesus wanted to go through Samaria. And on they did, and they came to a village that rejected Jesus. James and John, who had been up on the mountain, with Jesus along with Peter when Jesus face started shining as bright as the sun and his clothes turned dazzling white and then Moses and Elijah appeared with them must have remembered those stories about Elijah they had read or heard in the synagogue the story of when Elijah was approached by 50 men of Samaria 50 men sent by the Samaritan king who came and Elijah called up to heaven and fire came down and killed all 50 of those men. And then another 50 came and Elijah did the same thing, calling fire down from heaven to destroy the Samaritans. Probably a story that really thrilled young Hebrew children, though killing people shouldn't thrill anyone. Sounds like a good story. And here were these Samaritans who were rejecting Jesus. Why not call to heaven and say, send down fire and destroy this village. Let us do it, Jesus. Let us do it. And Jesus said, no. Because that's not what Jesus was about. I'm sure he was not very pleased with his disciples at that time. Besides, he had other things on his mind. He was headed towards Jerusalem, where he knew what his fate would be. He knew he was headed into danger. Along the way, there were, there were people who wanted to follow him, but Jesus told them what the seriousness of following him meant. It meant you don't have a home. It meant that you don't have a place to live. You don't have, you're not sleeping in your own bed every night. You're dependent on the, the kindness of strangers. And not all strangers are kind. Life was difficult to follow Jesus. Some, Jesus approached and said, follow me. And they all had excuses. Oh, I've got to wait till my father passes away. Once my dad's gone, I have no responsibilities. Yes, then I will follow you. Another says, oh, I've got to go home and say goodbye to everybody. The disciples, they probably looked down on these people a little bit because especially Peter, James, and John, when Jesus had approached them, they just dropped their nets. They had been out in their boats all night. They just dropped their nets in their boats and they left. They didn't look back. They knew that this life was extraordinary. But they knew that this life was suddenly getting serious headed towards Jerusalem. They would still see a lot. Jesus' teaching would become more and more profound. 
they would be convicted, they would be challenged, they would be in awe, they would fight over which one of them was the greatest. They would do their share of misunderstanding, their share of, of sinning. And yet Jesus kept his focus on going towards Jerusalem. And some, he would say, follow me. And maybe some would, but many would have excuses. You know, Jesus is still calling people to follow him, calling all of us to follow him, and yet so many of us claim to follow him, and so many of us fall short. If only the first commandment, the greatest commandment, was the only commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and your soul. How easy that would be. For we could gather and worship when we could gather and worship. We could sing our praises, and then we could go on about our lives. But Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus said to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Of course, he, this is all in the, the Hebrew Bible. This was not unique to Jesus. He did not invent it. But it was his message. And everything he did was him living it out. Loving his neighbors as he loved himself himself it's funny when Paul talks about these things he forgets the first commandment the greatest commandment you'll find it alone to love your neighbor as you love yourself in Paul's writings without the love the Lord your God with essentially all your being Maybe it's because it's so much more difficult. And yet, Jesus commands us when he says to follow him. One way we follow him is by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. I was struck this week when I heard, you've probably heard, um, you know, one of the, the congressmen, Republican congressmen who stood up to um, and voted for the impeachment of, of Donald Trump got a letter from one of his, or from several of his cousins saying that by standing up and voting to impeach Trump, that he was joining the devil's army, of Demo which is made up of Democrats and the mainstream press. And that really struck me, not because of the demonization of the other there, demonization of people with whom they had a disagreement. When you demonize somebody, it makes it easier to exploit them. It makes it easier to harm them. It makes it easier to kill them. I think that's why the command to love your neighbor as you love yourself is so important. Because as soon as we begin to demonize, we dehumanize. We make their lives less of less value. In fact, we begin to think that life without them would be a more valuable life. But Jesus taught about 
the Good Samaritan. Remember that story? Not long after he set his face toward Jerusalem, after his disciples had longed to burn up the Samaritan village, Jesus told a story about a man who was beaten up and robbed, left for dead on the side of the road, and a Samaritan, an outcast, one who had been demonized, probably by Jesus' disciples themselves. It was the Samaritan who stopped and gave aid to the man who had been beaten and left for dead. It was him who took the man who had been beaten to a place of safety, to a place of rest, to a place where he could heal. Jesus was trying to tell his disciples to stop demonizing those that God created to start loving, to stop praying for the redemption of our enemies and start not praying for the destruction of our enemies, but to start praying for the redemption of our enemies. And at the same time, to pray for our own redemption. To recognize our own shortcomings and to work to become better but also to realize that the work is done not by our will but by the will of God for when we set our face towards Jesus Then, and when we surrender to Jesus, it is the Spirit that Jesus sends that empowers us, that transforms us, that helps us to love those we may find unlovable. We long for a better world that better world is available to us. That better world is the kingdom of God. And we live in that kingdom when we love God with all our being and when we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We have just begun our Lenten journey but this journey is not one that is just a six week period that we have every year. It's a journey of life, of faith. If we follow Jesus, if we go where he is leading, we will find that yes, the road is difficult that everything that we give up is more than matched by what we gain. For the life of love, the life of faith, is a life of transformation, a life of surrender, a life of meaning. May we all have the courage to follow Jesus, to obey his commands, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Make Me a Servant.
if you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted his call to follow him and you would like to know more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, I invite you to contact me. You can call me at the church office, 817-641-3311. I would love to talk to you about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. There is no better life than a life of faith. And if you are looking for a church home, if you're looking for a place to, to join in, the, in ministry here in Cleburne, Texas, I invite you to join us. You can join us by just calling me on the phone and we can talk about what it means to be a servant of Jesus Christ here at St. Mark. That's, again, the phone number is 817-641-3311. Um, now for our benediction. Christ with you, Christ within you, Christ above you, Christ beneath you, Christ before you, Christ behind you. Christ on your right, Christ on your left. Christ when you sit down, Christ when you lie down. Christ when you arise. Christ in the eye of everyone who sees you. Christ on the ear of everyone who hears you. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of you. And Christ on the tongue of everyone who speaks of you. Amen.